Okay. Okay, guys. Hi, everybody. All right. Oops, that was really that. Okay, start over here. Okay, guys. Um, hi, everybody. I'm going to try to give you a demonstration on how to get started with your pet painting uh, remotely. So uh, I'm a little new to this, so we'll just see how this goes. Okay, so um, the most important thing before we get started with our painting is to talk about all of the prep work that you need to do beforehand. This is pretty important, okay? Um, I try to emphasize in the class that the more preparation that you do beforehand, it, it kind of removes the hurdles so that that way you can do a good job of it. So I found a um, photo of a pet that's very similar to a dog I used to have. I was very fond of her. And um, I think that this is going to work out pretty well. I took this photo and I opened it up into Photoshop uh, as I indicated on the directions for how to do this on the assignment. And I um, posterized this. So I opened this up um, and went to filters, filter gallery, poster edges. And as you can see, I've, I've turned this into kind of a blocky, almost like a paint by number kind of painting. And so you can see that there's very distinct areas of light, medium, and dark. Um, and so this is gonna make it a lot easier for me to get started, okay? So I've done that as my prep work. And I'm going to um, set this up so I can clearly see it as I get started with my painting. I'm gonna talk about our setup here for here in a second. I also did a bit of work on my sketchbook. So here's my initial drawing. I hope you can see that I started out with these kind of like big geometric shapes, okay? And um, I've tried to figure out like exactly the relationship of things. So breaking things down into circles and ovals and things like that, little triangles for ears, that's gonna help you out a lot. So this is like the first stage of my drawing. And then I went on and I did a, a second version. You can kind of see, you know, by there. Uh, and, and it's a little scribbly, but that's okay. You know, we want to, we want to have uh, uh, things not be precise in our sketch. This is a sketch. This isn't uh, a piece of artwork in itself. So I got this far on this one. And then I did another one, okay? which um, I'm pretty happy with. I'm actually you know, pretty happy with this thing. It looks just like my dog. So um, in this way, I've had a chance to uh, do this you know, several times over again, so that way I can get started, okay? Now, of course, you know, we're not gonna use a pencil to, um, to get started with our painting. We're going to work um, directly with our uh, paint. And when I look at this uh, pet, I'm going to try to figure out what is her local color? Now she's got a lot of different colors here, but I wanna go with something that's light as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of yellow ochre. And um, you remain, may remember yellow ochre is that color that kind of looks like brown mustard, okay? And I can, uh, I think I'm going to take a look at her. This is, it feels a little weird. I have to get everything really tight in here. So it's not exactly the way I would arrange things in my own environment. And I'm going to um, get started. So here, circle, and then something kind of oval for the midsection, and then Corgis have this really big kind of fluffy mane. Here's her head, and kind of the ears. On the head, we have this head here. And then on the bottom section, just kind of like hitting right there at the, at the midpoint, is going to be another circle. That's going to be her muzzle. And then a little spot for Eyes and nose. And I think I'll just go ahead and put some I think her I think her body got just a little bit long, so. 
I think that that'll work. Okay. Now, um, I kind of uh, quickly went uh, right into doing this. One of the things um, to think about, you know, and at this point you could stop and take a photograph of this and send it to me as part of like the very first stage of your painting and uh, that will count, okay? But I'm gonna talk a little bit about, um, about our setup. I'm back here in our good old studio. I've got easels, I've got my, my tabaret right here, I've got everything I need. You guys at home, it's gonna be difficult to set things up. So, you know, when you're trying to find a place to paint, if you've got like something like a work table or even a kitchen table, if you know family is okay with that, you can put down uh, some newspaper to make sure that you know nothing gets out of your way. Especially if you've got like nice hard surfaces and for the flooring, you'll be able to do any kind of cleanup. Remember, this is done with water, so we'll, we should be okay. Um, but it's really important that this canvas is at this kind of angle. You don't want to try to be painting on something that's laying down on a table. Uh, you want to be able to look straight at it, and when I look at this, the fa my face and the canvas are running kind of parallel. Does that make sense? I hope so. And also with this, I've got this over to one side. I'm not really happy with this being so far over, but I'm a little constrained here. So I've been doing some of my painting with hanging onto this here in my hand. It's also important that this be nice and upright, and don't try to work from it like this. As you can even see on the video, it's hard to see everything. Okay, so you want, you, know, you want to try to reduce the hurdles between you and your good work as much as possible. So these are just kind of the mechanical things that we can do. Now, you know, and at this point, you know, stopping taking a photograph, that's gonna work out pretty well. But I'm also gonna do like a little bit of measuring uh, when I come back to this and see how this is going. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this section of my painting. So I'm gonna take a look at this and so it looks like the length from the top of her head to the bottom of that of her chest is about the same as from the uh, front of her chest like maybe like right below her nose to the her bottom of her body so let's see if that works ah she's a little bit longer okay so i i was i was correct in having it all the way out here um i think that things will start to to uh, shake out once I get there. Okay, let's, let's take a look at, maybe from top of ears. Yeah, and that's about the same, okay. So top of ears to the bottom of her chest, yep, to the top of her tail, yep, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this section, which is gonna tell me just a little bit more of like all of these different shapes. And um, so I've got a small brush here and I'm still working with this local color. I don't like that thing over there. So, so let's see, I've got, so this is kind of restating some of my lines so that I'm pretty happy with. It. I'm also going to go ahead and put that little mouth in there. Her nose is pointed toward us, which can be a little difficult, but can you see that there's um, something like almost a, like a two little uprights here and something flat under her nose. So I've got the flat part, two uprights. And then the tongue is coming right down from that. And then the mouth just kind of keeps going. So that's working out pretty well. She's got kind of a section. This is all light. This is something kind of light, and then this is all medium. We've got another, another light spot in here. Some light back there. This is all light, and I've already put that stuff on it. This is all kind of. And a big fluffy tail. And I can go ahead and do those little tiny feet. Okay, they're just straight little paws. Okay, so she's looking pretty good. I think I'm going, I'm getting a little lost because I've got a lot of uh, the same color going on. So I'm going to pick up uh, one of my other colors here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you some of my colors. 
you know, we can see that she has several colors here. I think I counted five altogether. Uh, just the basic colors, not uh, all of the little nuanced things. So I'm going to pick up my my computer here and shift it over, so you can. I hope you guys can see see all my colors. Okay, so I've got like I've got a a light kind of a light medium, kind of a dark medium, a darker, and then real dark. Okay, so those are the ones I'm going to be using. Okay, we can sit back there. Now, it um, makes me a little self-conscious trying to paint and talk to the computer all at the same time. Um, if I had all of you guys here, we would be fine. One of you could just record me on one of your little phones and uh, we'd all be good, but we can't do that. So um, I'm going to, um, I'm just gonna get started here with this kind of medium dark color that's in here. She's got it all inside her ears. By the way, these colors that I made, um, and I'm gonna be making more of them, it's basically yellow ochre, okay, which we can see that mustard kind of color. I've added um, some cadmium red, which is that tomato red color, and um, some white, okay, because she's kind of pale. And um, uh, those colors ended up being really kind of bright. And when you think about using cadmium red and yellow ochre, yellow and red make orange. So I've toned it down with just a little bit of blue, okay? Um, I think I'll, I'll show you that again here so you can see that color. Okay. You can see it really well. You can see the yellow ochre in this one, and then the red in this one, but it looks kind of dull because I put some of this blue in there as well as the yellow ochre and the cadmium red. This has just a little bit more white in it, and this has pretty much all of the colors without white. There's just a tiny bit of white that were left over on my knife, but I put a lot of that in there, and I also put in a little bit of black just to kind of dull the color down. Okay, now back to So I'm picking up some of this kind of reddish color. You can see it in her ears. I don't have to worry about staying in the lines. I can just put it any place I like. I looked up corgis on the internet because this is an image of a dog that I used to have. And uh, I don't really have, as it works out, I just didn't end up getting very good images of her when she was my dog. So I have to go out on the internet and find one that's that's um, somewhat close. And, okay. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm gonna go into something that's, that's lighter. And just wiped out some of her, of her mouth, but I'll be able to get it back. Kind of overdid it with the brown over there, but that's okay. See how it just kind of covers right up? Yeah, I need some darker stuff there. This does go up just a little bit. Get those ears just a bit more. And 
Now I'm going to pick up, this isn't like the darkest thing I can do, but I'm just gonna err on the side of caution here. So that way if, if I put something down and, and I don't really care for it, I can always do something different. Now the dog does look like she has a lot of black there in the back, but um, I'm making something that looks a little bit more like a kind of a warm brown, kind of warms things up. Sometimes black can be a little cool. It has um, uh, just a little bit of a blue cast to it. White can do the same thing. They look a little cool, they're both neutrals, and they can uh, give a, a kind of a lifeless color to things, you know, if we just have to be careful with how, how we're using them, because they're, they're neutrals and they kind of neutralize our color. We like to have lots of color. I'm just kind of blocking this in, blocking that tail. Pretty big. Rush to be doing facial details, but okay. So she's kind of blocked in. All right. So this is um, the uh, stage of the painting where the the uh, most of the colors are blocked in. I can even, you know, if I wanted to, I can get kind of a, uh, you know, an idea of there's like a little landscape back there and I can you know give a little bit of thought to you know possibly these trees that are going on back here and you know before I ended the session I could even play around with the greens and you can see that there's kind of like a, a darker green down here and then there's a really dark green in here so this would be pretty much um, your um, yellow and uh, ultramarine blue to make a green uh, looks like it's kind of dark, so a little bit more blue, and it also looks a little dull, okay? So just a touch of red or uh, some kind of a brown. And then here under this, um, a lot more of the blue and the red to make that kind of like a nice, nice brownish kind of color. Okay, so, and when I'm looking at this, I'm going to do just a little bit more work on this before I really stop. And, um, and then I'm going to talk about like the next stage of the painting. Right now it's getting a little wet, okay? And, um, but I'm going to try to like, pull things back just a little bit. that just a little bit. Okay, I'm not sure about that. Let's see. Bigger. Make the eyes bigger. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Let me fix that. Yeah, okay, there we go. So I started to like tickle in just like a, a little bit of some stuff. She's got like here on this particular uh, photo that is altered. A 
I just can't stop myself. Okay, so one of the things that I'm thinking about here as I'm putting this together is the direction of my brush strokes. And some of that I explored with my sketch. You can kind of see, especially in this area, maybe not in this area, it's kind of like, you know, pushing things around, trying to make that dark, but I tried to get kind of the direction of the fur. And if this is a pet um, that you own, um, that you frequently pet, put your hands on, you know that there's kind of a direction of the fur or the scales or the feathers. And so I'm trying to imitate that in my brush strokes and that's giving it um, just a little bit more texture. So um, at this point, what I would do is, uh, for one thing, what you should do is take a photograph of this and upload it for the next stage of your painting, showing me that, um, that you've uh, um, gotten things to this point. I can't help it, I just have to keep working. I wanna define those little feet. Okay, maybe. And um, I would let this sit for um, a day or two, you know, work on your other class projects. I know that you've got other classes to take care of as well. And that'll get this uh, painting a chance to set up so that it's not gonna be quite as greasy to work with, okay? We've had experience that with that with our last painting. You know, just kind of taking it, you know, pacing it as we go. But um, I'm gonna pause this for a second and I'm gonna work on this um, a little bit more and then I'm gonna come back and, and tell you what, what we're going to do next, okay? Okay. I've um, kind of tidied things up just a little bit here and I'm going to work on the face a little bit because I have a feeling that that's something that um, you guys are going to be really um, uh, want to focus on. So some of the things that I'm going to uh, try to do is I'm going to try to just tidy things up here and the first thing that I want to do is um, work on um, some of the, like, the darks. This dark is just a little dull. So what I've done is I've taken the lightest color that I have and the darkest color that I have. And that's given me something that's just kind of like this pale stuff so that it still looks like the light fur that we see around um, little dog's muzzle but it still gives you the idea that there's you know, something else going on. I'm gonna spread this out a little bit. That will work. I'm itching to get something dark for those eyes and the nose. And so what I'm doing, you know, for you guys, if if this feels weird, remember I, I've shown most of you um, this little trick. I've got a big brush here and I can put my brush right here on this corner. I'm not laying it on the front of it, but just kind of touching it there. And then I'm laying my hand on this, and that steadies my hand. So you can see I'm, I'm able to get those eyes. And I'm starting with kind of like little beady eyes, and then I'm letting them get bigger gradually. Otherwise, we're gonna come out with a dog that looks like it's you know part of Japanese animation. The nose can frequently be kind of squarish. Kind of. It's almost kind of like a hexagon. Okay. And uh, she does have a little bit of kind of doggy eyeliner. I 
there to the side. Okay. And um, the um, inside of her mouth looks a little dark. See how that works? Okay, I'm going to um, actually I'm gonna take this over here. Can you guys see how that worked? Okay, sorry, my email is, keeps popping up there. Okay, and now the color for her tongue. So a little bit of cad red, nice tomato red color, and a little bit of white. And there she has her tongue, okay? There we go. Now, um, at this point, um, I've got like a, a lot of um, stuff done. Uh, I think I'm going to work just a little bit more on her face so that you can see it. I'm getting the pink off of this uh, brush because she has just a little bit of white there on the top of her nose and under one eye. Okay, and That'll do for now. You know, I've got just like a little bit of dark at the top of her tongue, so that that way we can see that um, the tongue is in the mouth. Um, uh, looking pretty good. Now that I've got all of the parts on, um, this is another stage where I think I might like let it sit for a little bit. But one of the things that I notice is it kind of seems like her eyes are just a little bit closer together, okay? And um, it can often, uh, it, it, she looks like a puppy. You know? So I'm going, to, I'm going to make some corrections by just adding a little bit uh, to the outside edges. Makes the eyes bigger. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to you know, make them small to begin with. So that, that way, yeah, I like that better. So that way, if, um, if it turned out that there were you know, too close or too uh, far apart, I could always kind of like add on the outside of the form or on the inside of the form, form to uh, just kind of squeeze them over a little bit. Making that nose a bit bigger. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think it's coming up. Okay. I tried gray and I regret it. I need something about that value, but not that color. That's not good. Okay. She's got like this dark stuff.
Okay, I'm gonna get this. Closer. Can you see how I'm starting to add the texture? So before this area of the painting was um, just like it was over here with this blocky kind of awkward looking stuff. And I know that for you guys who are just starting, you look at that and you think, I'm not happy with that. But when you look at this, you can see how I'm starting to add little lines of alternate color. And actually I made a kind of a nice discovery. I was struggling to get that dark color there around her chin. And it, that wasn't the problem. It was getting the lighter stuff next to it. And now I'm actually pretty happy. And I'm gonna go back and I'm going to like, kind of like work that in just a little bit. Yeah. And so now what I'm doing is I'm taking some of this light color that was up here, like right here, right around her face, and I'm distributing it over this kind of medium reddish kind of brown color. And I also put in some of this medium color kind of going in there. So what I'm gonna do is going to be like putting one thing on top of the other and, and just kind of like going back and forth. I'm going to do the same thing with this tail. Um, I'll show you how that will work. So right now I've got kind of kind of a dark color, a medium color, and a lighter color. And so I'm just going to start And you can see how that's starting to um, well I'll bring this closer. You can't see it. it's terrible. It's Kramer. So it's starting to break that up, okay? For those of you who've had um, drawing classes before, this is like hatching. So I'm applying like a series of lines. What that does is it adds texture. It adds texture, it breaks up the, the color so they don't look, you know, quite as um, just kind of blah. Um, it got just a little bit light. So now I'm going back in with some of the dark stuff. And I'll even live dangerously and uh, I'm picking up a little bit of this black. Okay. Yeah. So in general, that's darkening that part of her fur without looking like it's just one flat color. You know, right now I've got like some other stuff that I'm not like super happy with. See how that's kind of broke up those edges. I can even go in with some of this light stuff. So at this point, I would just keep doing this, okay? And you just keep doing this and doing this. Now, you, I could stop like right here at this stage on her face and I'd be really happy. If you wanted to get something like super, you know, realistic, uh, something kind of photographic. Then you just start putting in those, those little teeny tiny details. I just put like some little sparkles on her eyes. I didn't put that in with pure white. I used like some of the color of her fur. So that makes it look a lot more natural. So um, start started out, I used these great big brushes and now I'm down to these little tiny guys and I would just keep doing this. Um, I'm gonna be really happy with this. Um, so I hope that works, all right? So I'm gonna stop this and do a little bit of editing and I hope it works out okay, all right? Okay. Stop. Bye-bye.